I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I sincerely appreciate you taking, you know, three to ten minutes, however long this video is going to take, out of your day to listen to me talk about Quantrix. I love you for it, and I am appreciative of it. I really am. And I do hope that you find these videos valuable because I love making them because I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. But anyway, in episode 293, I want to show you how to identify the top X percent of items. I have here a model that has sales by location, by year, by month. And what I want to do is I want to identify which of those locations are in the top 50% uh, gross sales. Okay, or if I were to put 20%, I want to identify what locations are in the top 20% of sales. So in order to make this happen, I'm going to create another matrix for right now, and I'm going to bring in location. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to call this total sales, this metric here, and I'm simply going to go and say that it equals the sum of sales. And I can do it simply like that because I have linked categories. And if I were to go to Kiev here and highlight that row, I would see 15,380. And indeed, for Kiev, I would see 15,380. So I can see that it is calculating correctly. So in that lesser program, you may be tempted to sort descending and simply go like this and say, OK, well, I want to create a running total. And your running total is going to be the sum of total sales, sum total sales, by location first to total sales by location last. And that would give you a running total, possibly. And I'm not going to say last, I'm actually going to say this. Okay. So what it does is you would think it would say it would take the 17,000. And let me throw a comma separator in there for us here. Huh, that's curious. Why isn't it showing me a comma separator? Oops, bug. That's what I'd be saying right there. Anyway, I'll throw a comma separator in here. And maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can actually see it. Maybe I'll make it like 100 whatever the percentage I just selected. So you can see is I would say, well, in that lesser program, I'd probably take the 17 grand and I would say, well, okay, then I'm gonna take uh, Zaporozhye and I'm gonna add to it. So I should be seeing 33 grand here, but I'm not seeing that. It This looks completely scattywampus. And the reason being is because, just because I sorted it doesn't mean that the location actually changed position here and that this is the first location. Indeed, if I were to clear my sort, I would see that, yep, 11,000, then I add this 13 grand to it, I do get 24. If I were to add 14 to that, I'd get 38. So <clears throat> I am getting a, a running total, but I'm not getting it in any sort of ascending order. So therein is a problem. You can't treat this like you would do it possibly in that lesser program, also known as Excel. How can you do this then? Well, what I would do is I would go out here and I would add a rank function. Okay, and I would say, well, I just want to rank my total sales. So I would say rank equals rank. And what is the number I want to rank? I want to rank total sales. And what is my value list? Well, it's total sales across the locations. So if I were to go ahead and do that, I can see. And then if I were to sort this descending, right, I would expect to see rank one, two, and three, and so on in uh, sequential order here. And I would expect my sales to then also be in sequential order uh, in a descending manner. And indeed, that is what is happening. So then what I would do, it was I would add another column and I would call it running total, to total by rank. And then I would say, okay, sum, and then I'm going to say select S, I believe. And what is it that I want to select? I want to select my total sales across my locations. And my test range is going to be my rank 
across the location. And my condition is where it is less than the rank I'm on. And I may have to do this a little bit funky. I'm not an expert on select S. I wish I was, but maybe indeed this will show me that I know a thing or two about it. So if I want to say it's less than, or maybe I put less than or equal to the rank, then again, I can see that, yes, I get 17 grand here in my running total for number one. And for number two, I should get 33.5, which I do. And then uh, for number three, I should get 30 or I should get 49. And indeed, that is what I'm getting. So I've kind of created this running total by rank that's going top to bottom because I'm using this rank function and I'm, I'm evaluating that with my select S. So then what I need to do is I need to take a total of <clears throat> the total across all locations. So I'd say, and I'm going to simply go out here and I'm going to say, well, that is the sum of total sales across locations. Okay, and if I do that, I get uh, this value of 3,767. And if I throw it a comma on there, I guess it's it's not 3 million, it's 376,000. If I were to so total that, indeed, I see 376, 773. So that's my total. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply take the running total by rank and I'm going to divide it by the total. And that is going to give me a percentage And it's interesting how that seems a bit buggy in that it doesn't format it. I have to click off it. But anyway, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a top X percent flag here. So I got my percents going down saying, okay, well, 80% of my sales, if I wanted to take 80% of my sales, well, it's made up in these locations here that are found you know, below rank 20, if you will. So uh, to identify those quickly and to have it be updatable or easily updatable or parameterized, then I would simply say top X of percent flag is equal to, well, is my percent less than or equal to uh, this input cell here? And where that is the case, I would go ahead and make them ones and zeros. So why isn't this working? Maybe I need to make it uh, like this. Oh, it's because I'm only looking at the 20%. So indeed it is working. I was expecting 80. So if I have 20%, well, I can see that Kanash, Zaporozhye, Kirtland, and Salt Lake are, make, are the top four items these four items make up 20% of the sales, or these four locations. If I were to put 50% in here, it goes out and says, okay, these locations from Kanash to Lugansk make up 50% of the locations or the sales. Uh, in those locations make up 50% of the total sales. So that's how I would do it uh, using Quantrix Modeler. If you have any questions about how to identify the top X percent of items within Quantrix or anything that I showed you in that podcast, or if you have a better way to do it, I hope that you will reach out to me and show me or ask me your question at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com. I absolutely love Quantrix, and I want to make you a Quantrix master, so please join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. Today's podcast is brought to you by... QuantrixAuthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.